Edward Elric, the full metal alchemist who was once in search of the Philosopher's Stone. And Harry Potter, the Hogwarts student who was also once in search of the Philosopher's Stone. For years, the alchemy versus magic debate has raged on, so it's our job to settle it once and for all. I'm Proliludude. I'm Red Wolf. And it's our job to examine both warriors' strengths, abilities, weapons, and weaknesses to see who would win in a fight. After a failed attempt to transmute his mother back to life, Edward Elric lost his right arm as well as his left leg. And because of this, his limbs have been replaced with Automel. However, this isn't the reason why he started his journey to find the Philosopher's Stone. Indeed, he did it to restore his younger brother's original body since he was turned into a hollow suit of armor. His search for the Philosopher's Stone led him to becoming a dog of the military. Being a child prodigy, he became the youngest state alchemist of all time at the near age of 12. However, while his genius level intellect and natural talent when it comes to alchemy certainly helped him get accepted, the main reason this feat was achieved is due to the fact that he had a unique ability which impressed the Fuhrer himself. And that would be his ability to transmute without the use of an alchemy circle, like a boss. Because of this, his transmutations are incredibly fast and he can't have his alchemic abilities disappear. With alchemy, he is capable of creating both defensive barriers and weapons using a gesture as simple as clapping his hands. And yelling out, PRAISE THE LORD! Uh, no. Aww. Anyways, when it comes to defense, he sure knows how to combine the environment with alchemy, as demonstrated when he makes such things as large barriers that block enemies' attacks. He can even combine the use of his alchemy with knowledge of the terrain well enough to transmute stuff that doubles as both the defense and offense like columns of stone that help him get to higher ground, or hands that come out. And when it comes down to weapons, he's been known to create swords, lances, blades that become part of his automail arm, and more. Speaking of his automail, while it would be expected to slow him down considerably since it's made of steel, he is actually quite agile. When he upgraded to the lightweight automail, although his strength was decreased, he became even faster than before. However, Ed isn't just fast when it comes to physical speed, he is also a quick thinker, not to mention a brilliant strategist. Some of the more impressive strategies he came up with on the fly include when he copied Scar's technique to use against number 48. That time he fought the homunculus known as Greed and figured out his weakness to turn the tides of battle in his favor. And when he released ammonium into the air from inside of old dynamite tubes to stun the chimeras who were double teaming him, just to name a few examples. Even though his strength was lowered by his lightweight auto mill, he remains a heavy hitter capable of standing his ground against enemies far larger than he is. Without any help, he managed to defeat, or at least stand toe to toe against Greed, number 48, and two of Kimberly's Chimeras at the same time. While Ed has gone through intense training all throughout his military career, not to mention before it, he is still not invincible. In fact, he falls victim to numerous weaknesses. For one, he really does not like to be teased about how short he is. Teasing him about it will send him into a state of blind fury where all strategy ceases and he just wants to get his hands on his enemies. He gets to the point where he gets angry just from hearing his name and the word little in the same sentence, even when the word little isn't referring to his size. Also, it should be pointed out that to transmute something, he needs to have materials of equal value. So no, he can't just transmute a cannonball out of a piece of paper. Unless he crumples up the piece of paper. No. Besides being called short, another berserk button appears with him messing with his little brother Alphonse, especially since he's pretty much the only family Ed still has. When someone messes with Al, that is when he stops showing mercy on his enemies. And if there's anything Edward shows too much of, it's mercy. Although he's a member of the Amestrian military, he often refuses to kill when it's not absolutely necessary mainly because he joined the military to get the Philosopher's Stone and not much else. So he's a deserter? No. Anyways, because the Philosopher's Stone was made from human beings, he would never use it in a fight. So basically, this guy can go from your worst nightmare to your kindest enemy in a matter of seconds. Because he's a whim. Just be quiet for once. No, I'm his younger brother, Alphonse. But he's a run. Oh yeah, can a run do this? <laughs>
Harry Potter is Hogwarts' most exceptional student, often referred to as the boy who survived. For the vast majority of his life, he lived with abusive step-parents before being invited to Hogwarts. Being a wizard, he is able to use a flying broom called the Firebolt Broomstick. Within seconds, its speed can increase from 0 miles per hour to around 150. Not only does it have perfect balance, but also a breaking charm. Harry has many spells that could be of help against this powerful foe, including the Flying Charm, which makes the broom fly, or the Sectum Sembra, which acts as an invisible blade. There is also the Imperious Curse, which is capable of controlling the minds of anybody who doesn't have a strong enough will. Incendial serves as a basic fire spell. The Blasting Curse Confringo is capable of making anything it comes into contact with explode. And Avada Kedavra is the instant death spell. He has a far greater number of spells, but since abilities like talking to snakes won't come in handy for this fight, we'll just move on. While Harry Potter is a pretty clever wizard, his greatest strength, his defining characteristic is... His overly annoying fanbase? No, Red Wolf, it's his bravery. Harry is brave to a fault, never afraid to take on opponents far more powerful than he is. However, Harry Potter is not as perfect when it comes to using magic as it seems. For example, although he can use apparition, he sucks at it. Even though he passed his test, he had to rely on Hermione. Don't you mean Hermione? Whatever, he had to rely on her to get him through the test, since she was so much better at it. Therefore, it would be an impractical skill to use against Ed. Also, while he is a prodigy like his opponent, it should be noted that he is much less experienced. While Edward Elric has been studying alchemy ever since he was a little kid, Harry Potter didn't even discover that he was a wizard until around the age of 11. Despite this, facing Lord Voldemort and living to tell about it multiple times is nothing to sneeze at. With plenty of impressive feats under his belt, it goes without saying that Harry is one tough opponent. Edward may have a lot of motivation to procure the stone, but so does Harry. Let's finish this the way we started. Together! It looks like Harry gets the advantage of home territory. So, which one of these child prodigies is more determined to get the stone? The boy who survived? Or the full metal alchemist? A Philosopher's Stone? What's this doing here? You there! I need that stone! It belongs to the Headmaster! Are you kidding? What makes you think that I'll just hand over this stone? Sorry, but I think I'll be hanging on to it. You've left me no choice. Imperious Curse! What the hell? It looks like this will be more trouble than I thought. Fight! Flying Charm! Sectum Sempra! Confringo! You're an annoying little bugger, aren't you? Little? Did you just call me... Little? So what if I did? Don't call me Little! Incendio! Have you given up yet? I can't let this fall into the wrong hands. It belongs to Dumbledore! No matter what the cost, I must recover it! Avada can- I don't care! Fatality. And the victory goes to Edward Elric. While the fight wasn't completely one-sided, the fact of the matter is that Edward is superior to Harry when it comes to both long-range fighting and close quarters combat. Although Harry had quite a few useful spells to work with, they simply fell flat against the full metal alchemies mainly because he was more than fast enough to avoid most of them. Indeed, Edward's agility really saved him from a lot of Harry's spells, and it's no wonder he's so fast considering the fact that he trains all the time to improve not only his alchemic abilities, but also his physical attributes. Sure, he didn't dodge the second Sempera, but since it only hit his automail arm and wasn't strong enough to break it, Ed took no damage from that particular attack. 
Harry figured that the spell was simply ineffective against this particular opponent, so he didn't think to use it again. And also got hit by the Incendial spell, which did set him on fire and burn his coat. But keep in mind that Edward Elric also fought the Flame Alchemist Roy Mustang and managed to endure quite a few of his fire transmutations. And let's face it, even if Roy was holding back by a lot, his fire was still way more destructive than Harry's. In addition to outclassing him in the speed category, Edward also has the higher amount of strength and endurance of the two fighters by far. While Harry doesn't have many defensive spells, Ed's alchemy is useful for all kinds of situations. With his alchemy, Ed was able to use both defensive and offensive techniques to overpower Harry. Not to mention the fact that his alchemy took shorter charge than Harry's magic. In other words, his alchemy is more efficient. So Harry was outclassed when it came to CQC and long range battle? I guess you could say, for Edward this match was a case of tails I win, head you lose. So, to answer the question once and for all, the winner is Alchemy.